Okay, we got the recording started. Thank you. Let's go back now to the lecture notes. Okay. All right. So we see one 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 faith. The learning how to walk by faith. We are in lesson number eight, and we just started this last week. We started talking about the believer's walk of faith. What we want to do in this lesson is uh, just identify different areas in our lives where faith is important. Right? Where do we apply faith? How do we apply faith in different areas of life? Or our, our walk of faith, or our Christian walk. So we began number one by saying we are saved by grace through faith, and we are saved by grace through faith. So salvation, our experience, or our receiving of salvation, also it happens by faith in Jesus Christ. By faith, God gives it to us by grace, and we receive by faith. Okay. So even salvation happens, starts off like that. Next we saw number two, that actually everything we do must be done by faith in God. Everything, the Bible simply says, we walk by faith. What means that we live our life here on earth by faith. We walk by faith. Everything you do, you do it by faith in God. Okay? So we, uh, we see examples here. Uh, what do we eat? What do we do? Do it by faith. We, we, we spend a lot of time on number three, James chapter one, verses five through seven. So we spent a considerable amount of time last week on this. And we said faith is key to receiving from God. In order to receive from God, what's important? Faith. Faith is in, in order to receive from God. So we we looked at James chapter one verses five to seven. I'm just I'm just going to um, just review that very quickly. James chapter one verses five to seven. James says, "If any of you lack wisdom." Let him ask for God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Okay? So notice, I'll just review some of the things we already spoke about last week. Notice James starts by talking about wisdom. But then in the end of verse 7, he's talking about receiving anything from the Lord. Right? So it says, so these verses are not only talking about wisdom, receiving wisdom, but these verses are also talking about receiving anything from God. This is how you receive anything from God. How to do it. So he says, look. As far as God is concerned, and look here at verse 5 again. As far as God is concerned, God gives to all liberally and without the proof. Right? God is a giving God. Yeah, God is not a stingy God. God is a very generous God. He's a giving God. He gives to all. He gives everybody. And he gives to all liberally and with generously and without reproach. That means he doesn't scold us. Hey, why are you coming again? Why are you asking so much? You're asking me too many things. No. He gives to all. He gives generously. He gives without reproach, without scolding. Okay? But he says in verse 6, see, God is very generous, God, but when we want to receive something, we must ask in faith. Verse 6. Let him ask in faith. You're with me, right? So you can imagine it like this faith is the hand that receives from God. So I have a chocolate here. 
Friends, come and see it. So, the hand that deceives is the hand of faith. So, faith is the hand that receives from God. Right? God is a giving God. God is a generous God. He's giving, giving. But if Christ didn't come here and take it and receive it, whose fault is it? Prince, not my fault. Not my fault. I said, come, Prince, please stay. Right? So from God's side, God is a giving God. He's a generous God. But then from our side, we have to receive by faith. Faith is the hand that receives. So if you and I want to reach and receive from God, we do it by faith. Faith is the hand. So that's why he says in verse 6, let him ask in faith, but no doubt thing. And then he tells us, but we doubt that you cannot receive it from God. What we are going to do uh, a little later on is that we're going to talk about you know, how to receive, how to receive that bit. But now that we've just established that uh, it's important for us to ask in faith. So let's move on. Faith in the life of the believer. Number four, faith is the means to gain victory. Faith is the means to gain victory. Now notice in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, the Apostle John writes this. He says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And notice he says, Whatever is born of God, or, or you can, and that's called English, but you just said, Whoever, anybody, who is born of God. You are born of God as a believer in Jesus Christ. You have been born again. So you are born of God. That means it's like God gave birth to you. You have the life and the nature of God in you. Because you are born of God. You are God's life and nature. So never say, I got the devil's nature. Hey, how can you be born of God and have devil's nature? <laughs> oh, I have a sinful nature. How can is God sinful? No. So how can you be born of God and have sinful nature? No. You're born of God and you have God's nature. Right? The problem we have is the flesh. That's different. That's the flesh, the body, the mind. That's a different thing. But in the spirit, you are born of God. You are a partaker of divine nature. You are a partaker of the life and the nature of God. And what does the Bible say? Verse 4, it says, Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So you have to look at yourself as an overcomer. Hmm? I'm going to win all the time. I'm an overcomer. Because I'm born of God. What is your image of yourself? It has to be according to the Bible. And the Bible says that because you are born of God, you are an overcomer. So in your heart, in your spirit, you must be, you must be settled. Whatever situation I face in life, I am an overcomer. Because God already said that. God said, whoever is born of God overcomes the you are an overcomer. Sometimes we will face very difficult situations in life. Uh, but as a believer, your attitude must be I am an overcomer. 
Because the Bible says right here, first John chapter 5, verse 4, whoever is born of God overcomes the and God cannot be known. God is going with the truth. You are an overcomer. But it says how we have the victory. It says there in that verse, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Or uh, if you look at uh, other versions of, the, of this verse, if you put it like this, this is the means by which we gain victory over the world. For example, look at the Good News Bible and say that. This is the means by which we gain victory over the world. It is through our faith. So God is saying, you are an overcomer. You will overcome. You will have victory over what, sorry, or whatever you face in life. He didn't say you won't face hardship. But when you face hardship, you face it as an overcomer. You so say, I'm going to win. It might be a battle, but I'm going to win. I have to fight. I'm going to win. But how are you going to win? How are you going to have victory? It's through your faith. So my question is this. If a believer does not walk by faith, can he walk in victory? No. Not according to the scripture. Because the scripture is telling us that it is through faith that we gain victory over the world. The scripture is very really clear. The scripture says you are a winner, you are an overcomer, you have victory, but it's going to be through faith in God. That you and I are going to walk in victory. So that's why it's so important for us to learn how to walk in faith and in every situation, you and I say, I'm going to face this by faith in God. I'm not going to face this just by my own understanding. Yes, I, God has given me a mind, I will use it. Of course. Uh, God has given me physical strength, okay, I will use my strength and it, you know, go about life. Yes, fine. But the victory, the way we gain victory in every situation is through faith in God. Faith in God. So that's why. So I'm going to have faith in God in this situation. I'm not going to be affected. I'm not going to be moved by the difficulty or the complexity of uh, the, how big this problem is. I'm not going to be moved by that. I'm going to walk by faith in. Are you okay? okay. This is very important. Now, I don't want to say this in a mean way, but I want to say, you must understand this, that if believers don't walk in faith, they cannot walk in victory. I don't, I don't want to be good, not to be mean, but this is fine. But if believers don't walk by faith in God, they cannot walk in victory. That's why it's so important. To teach God's people how to live by faith. This is how you exercise faith in God. This is what it means to walk by faith in God. It's important to teach for this. Okay. So, number five. Let's go. I'm emphasizing, I'm spending a little bit of time emphasizing it. Excuse number me, five. sir. Sir, audio is not clear. The goal of faith, the life of the kingdom, very important. Faith is our shield against the you see, we are in a world that the Bible says is in darkness. The world is in darkness. And there is an enemy, the devil and his demons out there. And as long as we are in this world, the enemy is going to come against him. And he will tempt us, he will have dark hearts, he will go to He's trying to. Weaken our faith, he's trying to distract us, he's trying to, to get us off track. 
and he's going to try to do it. But God has given us something. Ephesians 6 and verse 16 says, above all, above all, meaning very important. So he said, you've got other parts of the armor. You've got your helmet. You got your breastplate. You got your belt. You got your shoes. You got your sword. You got all this. But he said, above all, meaning most importantly. Suppose you're telling somebody, you know, do one, two, 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 three, four, five, six, and most important, this one. So that's what he said. Most importantly, above all, what must we do? Taking the shield of faith. Faith is a shield. Excuse me, Pastor. Excuse so me, Pastor. Faith in God is like a shield. And this shield, he says, will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The wicked one will fire those darts. Fire the darts. So this picture, you know, uh, Paul, of course, was writing uh, in, in the first century AD. So he must have written this around uh, sometime before. Uh, around Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. In those mm -hmm. days, they used to fight mm -hmm. using sword and bows and arrows. And one of the things they did was, if they wanted to shoot at the enemy, one of the things was, Excuse me, Pastor. They you cannot hear properly. Like this, the arrowhead with fire. Arrowhead. Put a cloth or something. Light it up with fire. And then shoot it. So that was a fiery dart. So that, you know, if it falls on something that can catch fire, it will catch fire. So that's fire in that. We should fight with the guy. So Paul is using that picture. He says, you and I can take our shield off. Faith. And if the enemy shoots at Satan, because they shoot these fiery darts, we can quench them. Extinguish them with our shield of faith. So it doesn't mean the devil will not shoot fiery darts. He will shoot. He will attack. He will do different things. But our faith in God will put out all of those fiery. Why is faith in God so important? Excuse me, Pastor. It can extinguish all the fiery darts of the devil. Now he'll attack. But when you stand firm in your faith in God, it takes all the fiery darts. Of the Think about first Peter 5 and 8 and 9. It says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This is him. We cannot hear. Steadfast in the faith. Hear me. Right, first Peter five, Resist him. Being steadfast or firm in your faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by brotherhood in the world. That means there is an enemy, he will attack, but we can resist him being found in the before we can resist. Pastor, we cannot okay. hear, please. So, what are Pastor, we saying here? Hello. We can live in victory, faith in God. We can overcome the world with faith in God. We can overcome the works of the enemy, temptation, whatever, whatever, whatever the enemy does. We can overcome by faith in. Pastor, excuse me, Pastor, we cannot mm -hmm. hear. So, I want you to think about this. 
sometimes believers believe that this talk oh the devil is attacking me the devil is causing so much problems the devil is troubling me the devil is running only problem is i am running is chasing wrong way it's got to be the other way you have to chase and he has to run now it's the other way so believers talk like this but really that's not the way we're supposed to be talking because of about jesus christ the bible says defeated the devil on the cross and he crushed the head of the enemy he defeated the devil he didn't defeat the devil for himself he was already god king lord so he defeated the devil for your sake and my sake for us so i'll do it for you and now he says you walk in that big tree you walk in that but you walk by faith if you walk by faith your faith will make you overcome your faith will be like a shield and no matter what the devil tries to do he's not going to succeed against you hello pastor we cannot hear excuse so, me pastor that's excuse me pastor the mindset we must have excuse me pastor that there is nothing that the devil can do as long as i have my shield of faith as long as i am putting up the shield of faith there is nothing that the devil can do to affect me he will try not say he won't he will try and he will keep on trying till the last day of punishment but the bible says if he used the shield of faith we will prevent all the fiery arrows of the wicked if we stand firm in faith we can resist the devil i understand so that is our conviction you know um, especially when we go on mission trips so we have been this starting mission trips so that means you know we, we said we don't come here and you know, go to this trip come back i think next week it's the first mission they go for two three days not a long time uh, so generally people have this idea i hear it many times oh if i go on a mission trip i go minister and i come back then the devil attack me so why are you thinking like that that's wrong thinking don't even think like that so when i go on these trips i don't even think like that i go i'm going to advance the kingdom of god go minister to people wherever which will part of the country come back i'm not afraid i'm not afraid the devil is going to do something to retaliate attack come to the town what's <laughs> being i am not worried because the bible says you have your shield of faith and you will quench all the fiery darts of the so before i go i have my shield of faith when i go i have my shield of faith and i come back i have my shield of faith so make sure this works. so we have to change our thinking sometimes we think any wrong thing about what the devil can do to us so i have the shield of faith Now, once we were in, uh, this was before the pandemic, of course, it was due to the pandemic, all the mission trips stopped. But we were doing a, a, a pastor's conference and a youth conference. <laughs> we cannot hear clearly. And uh, so we had our youth, uh, ministry to the youth. Uh, in, in, in one session outside, they had a tent and a ministry there. Then inside the building, we had a pastor's conference. this all comes we come attending the conference so uh i'm not thinking about any demonic manifestation anything because this is fastest they're already serving god 
So we were very strict. Then on the second day, uh, so we were there for three days, I think. On the second day, in the second session before lunch. So I finished teaching and I said, okay, we all stand, let's pray. So all the pastors stood up, we have to say, we were 200 pastors, we all stood up. And uh, suddenly I felt I have to rebuke the devil. So uh, this pastor's conference, all our pastors here, where, where are you rebuke? You know, why do you need to rebuke the devil? But anyway, that moment in the prayer time, I simply said, Satan, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. But of course, we had an interpreter, so he was interpreting it into the name of that. So the moment I said, Satan, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus, two rows in front. Uh, one of the men started laughing. Ah. Then he came up. Everybody, you know, because this is pastor from what is a pastor got He possessed our he's manifesting. He came in front. Started, you know, being shouting and you know, and, and, uh, the demons were speaking. Uh, uh, they were speaking in Hindi. I can understand a little bit. Uh, I didn't understand everything for the witness. But but the moment, but the thing is this. The moment this person started manifesting, and all the demons started speaking, whatever. For me, and I'm saying this because I want this to be the way you minister, right? I'm not saying this to the way you minister. For me, it's like, I'm not afraid. Not afraid. And it's, it's okay, all the demons manifesting. They have to listen to me. I'm not afraid. So he started very aggressive, he came in front. I'm standing here with the interpreter. He came around, ah, you know, full manifesting and aggressive. I said, he came in, no, I have to the interpreter said, the verdict. So you have to come out of him in the name of Jesus. And so he was shouting something, the demons were shouting something in the name. I didn't understand what he was saying. But, but I just said, in the name of Jesus, you have to come out. Then at that moment, I had a funny idea. Count till three. And he will bow his knee. So I said, demons, I'm going to count till three. And you will bow your knee. So everybody's watching. This man is in the front. I shout me making that noise. I said, one. Two, three, and I said one, two, three, in front of everybody, this man, plant on his feet, just, he just went, and that was, he was lying on the floor for about some time, he could see it running to the street, and after about 15 minutes or something, he woke up, what happened, he fully into the person. The point was this. You're not afraid of the devil. Not afraid. It's a demon's man. So what? Demon shouts, so what? You're not afraid of Why? Because you have the shield of faith. You have a shield of faith. They can't penetrate. They can't come past the shield of because the Bible says, you take your shield of faith, you will quench all the fiery darts of them. And you and I need to know our authority in. This is our authority. So, you're not afraid. It doesn't matter how many spirits, the demons, whatever. You're not afraid of those things. Right? So, let's move forward. A few more. Number six. We receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. That is Galatians 3 and verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
So how do you receive the promise of the Spirit? It is by faith. So now what is the phrase here? The promise of the Spirit. This is the same phrase that Jesus used in Luke, the 24th chapter. Uh, I think it's verse 47 or 48. I just have to turn there to check. Luke 24. I think it's verse 47, 48. Let me just check. Luke 24. Oh, verse 49. Sorry. Luke 24, verse 49. Jesus said, Before I send the promise of my father upon you. But wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from one. So that phrase, the promise of the Spirit. Here Jesus refers to that as in Luke 3 49, it refers to it as the promise of the Father. In Acts 2, 38 and 39, again Peter refers to it in Acts 2, 38 and 39. He says in verse 39, the promise is to you and to your children. Acts 2, 38, 39. Right? In verse 39, he's referring to the Holy Spirit. He says, the promise is to you. So that's the same language that's used here in Galatians 3, verse 14, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. What is the promise of the Spirit? It is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You can read it in Luke 24, 49, Acts 2, 38, 39, now Galatians 3, 14, while talking about the promise of the Spirit. So what does he say? You receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So how do you receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? By, by faith. So I remember I was about uh, I was about 13 years old. Let me think. Uh, 13, or maybe 13 or 14. School. I was in school here in Bangalore. I have never been exposed to uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit because uh, I was in a, I was I was raised in a traditional church. Uh, it was a it was like a CSI church or other later the Methodist church. So we were part of the Methodist. Church. So there we never heard much or hardly about the Holy Spirit. Never. They didn't mention it, but we never learned nothing about praying at times, nothing about the kids of the Holy Spirit, nothing about miracles and healing. So I, I was not exposed to that. So I was about 14 years old. Um, sorry, 13, 13 years old. And uh, I'm very mixed up now. 13, 14. So I must be 14. I can uh, so, my, one of my school teachers, he took us, some of our students, he said, I want all of you to receive the Holy Spirit. I was really, okay, the Holy Spirit, I want to receive. I do come out, you believe receive Jesus. Oh, I want to receive everything there is, I want to receive. So, I'm ready. So, uh, so he took us to an aging church. I was never, I never went inside an aging church. I didn't know what was an aging church. But he took off there. Here in Bangalore, still there. And, uh, and then he said, they are going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Because I see it in the Bible, you know. I see it in the Bible. I didn't understand anything. I was just 14 years old. But I was ready. God. It's there in the Bible, I'm on the scene. But then he started playing drums in the church, loud music, full singing. I was very scared. I never experienced something like that. Because in the Methodist church, everything is very quiet. 
you stand up and sing the hymn, look, you sit down, find it. No drums, no guitar, no music. This was scary. I was scared. And it was very loud music. Very loud. Never expected. I was so scared. Then they started praying for the people. For all of us, there were about maybe 15 students or something. I forget the exact number of students. They started praying. Come on, pray. And they were praying in tongues. No, I was scared, even more scared. <laughs> Never heard something like this. <laughs> what is going on? I was very scared. So that was my first experience. Huh? And they said, come on, pray in tongues. I did not want to pray. What is it? So I was just waiting for it to get over so I can go home. <laughs> so I came home. I did not say anything in tongues. Maybe I tried to say one word. I don't know. <laughs> but the Bible says, we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So I went to my in my own house, when I went back home, I prayed. I said, God, I see this in the Bible. It is there. They said, these signs will fall in those who believe. In my name, they will speak with you. And it's there in the Bible. But I don't understand. I was very scared. So, Lord, can you help me? And I read, that's Corinthians 14. Beautiful chapter. It says, when you speak in tongues, you are edifying your self. Oh. Then I, I get about to this. Because it is edifying me, it is strengthening me spiritually. I want it. So in my own room, I pray this. Say, God, I want this. I don't know. I was very scared. They said something. Oh, I was very scary. But this is the way. Break in tongues, you see that? I want this. So in my own room, why? Just started coming. I started just praying it. Just how, how did I receive? It says you receive the promise of the Spirit through. See what we need? We just need simple childlike faith. Thank you. And then I started telling all my friends. Hey, you can receive the Holy Spirit. Start praying. And my, all my friends in the school, they all started praying. You know, I mean, believers. They also have to pray in tongues. And we used to pray for people on the phone. Come on, pray. They start praying in tongues. Oh, it's just wonderful. Like almost about 60, 70 students, uh, you know, see the Holy Spirit. I'm praying in tongues. So it was wonderful. But it was simple faith. So we didn't know everything. We hadn't read the Bible fully. But this is the faith. God had said, you can receive the promise of the Spirit through. So you tell everybody, hey, you have faith in God, you can receive. That's all the students. You know, we all started praying in tongues. It was wonderful. And it was a great time. So, why is faith important in the life of the believer? We receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Okay. okay let me pause here. Any questions? Let me just check the live chat. Okay. Somebody said voice is not clear. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, how's the voice now? How's the audio now? Is the audio okay? Oh, this the audio wanted. It's not good. Don't think there seems fun. Is audio okay now? I'm good. Okay, should be better now. Is audio okay? I just changed the input. 
Okay, now it's fine. Okay, so I'm sorry about this. I should check it every every time. I had to change my settings. Okay, I uh, I hope the recording would have better audio. Um, so in case if you have time, you could just go back and listen to us. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't change the settings here. Okay, now it's okay. All right. So, any questions for from the those who are online? If you um, have any questions, any questions from those in class? Okay. Um, were you all able to follow me? Uh, I mean, or at least in part, if my audio the audio wasn't very clear. Um, so let me just quickly review what we covered today. Um, so what we did was we went through the first six points here in the in, in the believer's walk of faith. We talked about we are saved by grace through faith. We said uh, everything must be done in faith. Then we went through faith is key to receiving from God. And then we talked about how faith is the means to gain victory. So we are overcomers, but the way we walk as overcomers is through faith in God. We talked about faith as a shield against the enemy. Uh, the enemy will come against us, but the shield of faith, our faith in God is like a shield that quenches all the fiery darts. And then we, lastly, number six, we talked about how we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we receive that gift. We receive the promise of the Spirit through simple faith in God, childlike faith in God. So till that, uh, we have covered. Uh, I apologize again that uh, I didn't check the chat uh, to see that there were some audio problems, but uh, hopefully it's fine now. Okay, so let's pause here. We'll go for our break. We'll be back uh, in about 10. I think we have 15 minutes. We'll come back. Uh, and at 11 o'clock, we will start our next class. Okay? Thank you. Let's go for our break.